Hi everyone, trust you all are doing well. So what we're going to do in this one, if the user clicks sign up, so this field to work now. So if we click sign up, we need to get to the payments, uh, basically the checkout page right here. So as you can see, we got our payments plan equal monthly right there. So we're going to process the form. And this part right here will be handled by Stripe Elements. So I'm not going to make use of these fields right here. Um, actually, the JavaScript library of uh, of Stripe will actually handle the payment in the cart and all that kind of stuff right here. But we're going to get to that part very soon. Right. But there's another thing that I want to do in this case. I want to change uh, and these fields to our database. So let's say later the user wants to update their details basically in the dashboard, the billing address and all that kind of stuff. They can just update it from the dashboard. But when they sign up right here, they can either leave these fields nullable or once they've filled in, we can actually just process their billing information as well. Okay. So this billing information, it's just a little thing that I want just to make sure. If we go to the Stripe API uh, right here, let's go to the customer, the customer address. Right. You will see that we've got a field for city. We've got the country, line one, line two in the postal code and obviously the state. Right. So I'll leave a link in the description. So if you want to go and read more about this, just to check these fields. All right. Now, the thing about this for me is just I will make sure that this corresponds basically with Stripe. So if I create fields, I'll create them the same way in this with the same names according to Stripe. So when I save them, because uh, what will happen now is Stripe will use these details for the billing for the customer. All right. So when you create an invoice for the customer, you will use these this address if they want to have them actually on the invoice and stuff. All right. So I will add these fields to my database using the customer uh, column that was created. So when we install Laravel Cache in the database um, migration, the schema that was created for our customers, this one right here. All right, the Steve. Uh, then for the users, it added these four tables. So what I want to do, I just want to add the billing right here. Or what you could have done is you can just add it to the user table. It's the, the, you can add it right here as well. So it's your choice. For me, um, since it's customer, so if I'm going to look for anything, I will know the billing stuff is here. Or you can just go here and just update them here. It's your choice where you want to put them. All right. So let's go for the customer right here. Another thing is you could have added another table for billing details and you can have had a relationship. But for me, it just does, doesn't justify having uh, another table basically in our database just for that. Right. But the user is uh, getting the table is actually getting a bit large, but it's still OK. All right. So let's quickly add those tables. So the first one. Um, this will be a string. Okay, this will be line one. Fine. And this is going to be a nullable field. Okay, let me just actually put them at the end. Right there. Right, the next one is line two. Okay, line two. Right, let's just copy them down. And this one will be the city. Okay. And this will be, let's just quickly go back. As you can see, we've got the line one, line two. Then we've got a city, state, country, and postal code. Okay. So, right. So let's do it like city, state, country, and then the other one is postal code. Code, and all of them are nullable. Okay. So it will just basically add this also to the user's table at the, after this right here. So let me just save this. Let's migrate the database. Okay. PHP Artisan migrate fresh. Seed. Okay. So let's do that. See the database, all good. So let's see if we got these fields in there. 
All right, so we've got our line one, line two, city, state, country, and postal code right there. As you can see, it gets a little bit quite large, actually, as a database. All right, so let me just do this. As you can see, we've got our things right there. Okay, so all good. So let's start with the process. All right, so let's process the form. Okay, so let's just close this off. All right, so now if we go to that checkout view right there, um, as you can see, if we had the template, you will see I had a whole lot of, I just basically copied this field down right there, but I left, let's just remove all the required and out of focus fields like this. Okay. Now, the next thing that I want to do in here is, where's the form? There is the form. Okay. So let's add, let me just actually call this one uh, payment form. Okay, so what I want to do, I want to add an action method, and this is going to be for the route. The route right here, this will be the payments.store. Okay, so if you just made it payments, you can just call it payments right there. Okay, so in the method, post method. Okay, so the other thing that I want to add in here, I want to add the ID field because I'm going to hook onto this ID field for processing the form with JavaScript. Okay, so we're going to do payment dash form. Okay, so we got that right there. So we got the ID. Let me just give us some room so we can actually easily see things. We got the payment form. All right, so this is our heading. Okay, the next thing that I want to do, we can actually build this yeah no, it's fine all right so we got our payment form right there let's quickly put uh two hidden input fields okay hidden all right two i want two hidden input fields so just create two hidden input fields okay this one is going to be for the plan okay so we're going to use this plan to create just you will see in a second Right, so we're going to give it the name of the plan, right, and then we're going to give it an ID of plan as well, and then we're going to give it a value. Okay, the value is going to equal to the request plan. This. Right, so that's the plan. The other one, this is going to be for our payment method. Payment method. Right, now the thing about the payment method, we're not going to assign a value. We're going to assign the value with JavaScript. We're going to do that with JavaScript, okay? So let's just quickly add this one. Give it a payment method, a name of payment method. Okay, we're going to give it an ID of payment method as well okay so that's our payment method right there now now we're going to deal with the names okay so that, this is basically our name um, let's just put it like this this is our name we've got an id so that's all good the value of the old name that's all good but the problem is i don't want actually the value to be the old name i want the value field to actually be the one that comes from the database okay so i'm just going to change this to be right in this case what we're doing is you see the dot value right there we're passing a variable so we don't have to put in the brackets like this or otherwise we're going to get an error Right, we're just going to pass in basically the authenticated user, like this, um, user, and then we just want to pass in the name, okay, so to fill in basically that field right there, okay. The next thing that we want to do is we're going to do the same for the email, okay, so let's just go there. Right, so those two things are basically required when the user actually sign up. So email address. Let me, let me just show you where I get this from. Okay, so let me just open my user model, otherwise you might get lost and people get angry with me. 
right? So I made an email address uh, method right there that's just calling the email. Okay, so that's what I'm referencing right here. So if you don't use these fields, you could have just used the value and then you can use the brackets like this, the blade uh, brackets. Okay, now the other thing is let's go down. All right, so this one is basically for the address. Okay, this field, uh, let me just go here. This one is for the email. Okay, this one is for the also address. Okay, so the address field, this one, we're going to call this. Let me just do this. So this one is basically for the line one. Okay, so let me just do this. Line, okay, so line one. Okay, so this is basically the line one. Let me just remove the autocomplete as well. Okay, so I'm going to call this cleat uh, address or um, postal code. Postal. So that's that. Right, so if we go to the view right here, we'll see we, we got the John Doe, we got actually the email, but I want this form to be disabled so they don't change the email address because if they do change it here, I want it to be the same as the one that's in the database. So I will just disable it right here. But what I will do in this case, as you can see, we've got those details right there. Right, so what we want to do in this case, we just want to add the disabled right there. Okay, so that, that people cannot edit that field, but it displays the email address. This is line one. We can actually just copy this down and make it line two. Two, let me just copy it down. This line two, like that. Okay, so. So what I'm going to do, actually, let me just copy this like, like this so that we're actually displaying it as is to the customer. All right, I pasted the, it in there as well. So what I'm going to do in line two, I'm just going to copy that and paste it in here as well. All right, so the apartment building. Okay, right, so we've got the city field, okay, so we've got the country, and we've got the zip, but the zip needs to be postal code. Let me just change it to postal underscore code, like this. Okay, just to correspond with the database, uh, postal, postal code, or zip. Okay, so that's basically a payment information. Now, the next thing that we want to do, okay, so that's basically the details for the billing. Now, the next one right here, this is going to be required by this field right here. I'm not going to have, where's the card information? This one. Right. So this is the card number. This is the expiry date. This is the CSV. But this right here is going to be handled by Stripe itself. So we're going to have the Stripe JavaScript library to actually display the card right here. Okay, so let's just delete that. Okay. You know what I can do? Let me just do it like this. All right, so that's the card number. That's for the label. Just keep the label. And just remove the input field. All right, and just create a div. Now let's create an ID with the card element. Like this. This is the element library of Stripe that will actually be responsible of actually creating it. So what I want to do, I just want to add a class of padding two and a shadow. Uh, let's just leave the shadow. I don't think the other ones got shadows. Okay. The next thing underneath this one, I just want to add a div for the card errors. Okay. So let's just create one with an ID of card. Errors. So if we want to display the any errors to the user to say like the card expired or the date or anything like that is wrong or something. Okay, so just add a class here as well. Space Y of two. 
and text red or black. Okay, so that's going to be for our errors. All right, so we've got our button right there with our secret. So what we're going to do, this will get a little bit too long. So in the next part, we're going to add the JavaScript in there to handle the form right here. Then we're going to process the form in our payment controller. All right, so in our store request, we're going to handle that and then create a subscription. Okay, so as you can see, it's quite a lot of things to do to get things functional and all that kind of stuff. All right. So that's it for me. So I'll see you in the next one where we're going to be handling the JavaScript and the Stripe elements to actually create a card element right here in order to display the card so that the user can fill in their details and we can display the errors right here. All right. So thank you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.